All right, hood's on. Have a nice flight. Have a nice flight. Hello. One of the things I needed to do to get my night rating was get more instrument time. So to get your private license, you need to have five hours of instrument time. To get your night rating, you need 10. Now, one thing I wanted to do eventually one day was fly into Vancouver's airspace. It's pretty busy down in the greater Vancouver area in terms of airplanes and airspace and air everything. Um, but I wanted to have the experience of doing that. Fortunately for me, Riley, my instructor, has spent a lot of time in flying in Vancouver's airspace, so he was really experienced. And so we decided, hey, two birds with one stone. If I do hood time on the way down and hood time on the way back, we can fly down into the Vancouver area and fly back. I should have my instrument time and I would have had the experience of flying in some of the busiest airspace in the country. Big old shout out to, to Riley and uh, shout out to uh, Riley's friend Ty down at Pitt Meadows who was giving us constant weather updates. The thing about that is that the weather was pretty not great. Um, we weren't actually sure if we were even going to be able to go because uh, the weather was kind of like could have gone either way. So we just decided, you know what, let's take off. We'll go. We'll see how far we get. Worst case scenario, we turn back. Best case scenario, we make it down there. So yeah, spoiler alert, we made it down there. Um, and let's go watch that now. Here we go. You have control. I have the airplane. 280 up to 4,500 feet at 85 knots. Roger. 280 Okay, so keep that T scan. One, back here, over, back, down, back, over, back, down, back, over, back. Okay. Great. Right. All right, now I got a challenge for you. Do you remember how much RPM is knots and how many RPM is feet per minute? Uh, I think 100 RPM is 100 feet per minute, something like that. Yeah. And how many knots? Uh, that I don't know. Ah, good question. So, let's see what it is. So I have control. You have controls. And what's going to happen here is if I can get a stable in a nice <laughs> area here. If I bring the nose up, we should see about 100 feet per minute of a climb. Yep. With about a 5 knot loss. Okay. Okay. So, if I want to see, and I'll level this back out, if I want to see... 500 feet per minute climb rate at 90 knots. Yep. Well, first I'm going to add my RPM. Add my 500. And let's nose the plane up. And I'm going to see pitch is going to be airspeed, right? We know that. And powers are altitude. So, we've got 90 knots roughly set there. Back to my attitude indicator. But my climb rate, what's it doing? 600. 600. So I'm going to pull a little bit of power out, which you don't normally do, but we're doing it here just to show you performance of the aircraft. Oh. And you're going to see that we are 90 knots at 500 feet per minute. Right. There you are. So here's your nice stable climb rate. Okay, so this is a non-full power climb rate. This would be a larger aircraft that you see. Our aircraft are always full power. So I'm going to level us off here. Pull the power back. I want you to show me a descent at 95 knots at 500 feet per minute. Okay. So down to the patio. Yeah, so how much power are we going to pull? We're at 22 at 95 knots. Uh, 300 RPM. Okay. Pull 300 RPM. Let the nose down. So once you hit your VSI, catch it. And now, look at your airspeed. Make sure your airspeed doesn't go up or down. So it's not quite 95, hold on. Okay. Push forward slightly. Good. A bit more power to decrease my descent rate. And bring the nose up if you're doing that as well, right? More power, you need more nose okay. up. Because it's also going to make you speed up a little bit, too. So somewhere right around there. So right around there? Nice. Level Almost. me off at 45. Okay. Nice work. Did you get nauseous with unusual attitudes? Nope. Did we do partial panel unusual attitudes yet? A little bit? Yes, we did, yeah, cool. using the VSI instead of the... Cool. Alright, I have control. You have controls. You can close your eyes for one moment there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're going up. I feel like we're going down. I feel like we're going up again. Recover. 
Cover, that snow's down, so power idle. Car beat. With, with level car beat. Brand to cruise. Cruise. Good work. I'm really hoping we get some carb icing today, just so you can experience it. I'm torn. You're torn? <laughs> Hard of flying. On one hand, I was like, yeah, it'd be good to kind of be a bit more familiar with that. On the other hand, eh. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like this Pretty all the way down there, I'm going to call back and be like, who gave me that weather brief? <laughs> Alright, so, trick for you. We are oh. below one cloud, above one cloud. Yeah. Let's turn to the left, because I can tell you it's going to be moist here. Plus, we have to turn left anyways. <laughs> this is, wow. Okay, this is why I fly. <laughs> this is it right here. Eerie feeling. What's that? <laughs> Eerie feeling. Look up. Yeah, I got a glass up and just like, oh, look at that. Feels like I'm about to be swallowed. <laughs> but I know we, like, we got tons of altitude above us, so I'm like, eh, we're good. How are you doing temperature-wise? Warm, cold? Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> just chill. That's what's my body. My right shin is fine, my left arm is cold. That's understandable. <laughs> Need a nice puffy jacket. I went to get my class three instructor rating signed oh, yeah? off, and... My girlfriend was like, you'll love this story. And we walk in and like, like, oh yeah, it's like all Patagonia and like pricey stuff. And then I'm like, oh, clearance section. Walk into there on this nice display stand is this jacket. I love tan stuff and I needed a puffy jacket. I'm like, God damn it. Because I know I'm going to grab it. She's going to say, I told you you'd like this. Because <laughs> I didn't want to go. And I'm like, I'm going to bite the bullet. I grab it, walk out. She's like, I knew you'd find something, <laughs> and I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> it was so funny, though. <laughs> Actually, I dare you. Open the window and put your hand outside. You're good. Can you hear yourself? <laughs> yeah. It's funny, because uh, because I have earplugs in, I can hear my voice in my head. Oh, yeah. So that's why I had it up. I'm like, oh, I can hear myself just fine. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you ask? <laughs> Let's turn 160. 160 rudder, clear right, left, left, but, right. Yeah, clear left. On the other right. The other right, got it. Funny enough, when you're under pressure panel, you do not coordinate. You don't use enough rudder. Oh, when gotcha. you are full panel, it's beautiful. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> like, That's... none of your partial panel turns were coordinated. Right. Every single one of these turns after I took the pe partial panel off have been beautiful. Sweet. Just a food, okay. food for thought That's type of thing. Confusing. Hope traffic, Cessna 172, Gulf Victor Oscar Tango, about seven miles to the north, 4,000. We're going to be transiting westbound across Hope Airfield towards Pit Meadows. Hope traffic, Gulf Victor Oscar Tango. All right, let's turn 190. 190 rudder to the left. Clear right, clear right, right. left. Clear right. One day I'll get it right. Or left. I'll get it right or left. Alright, let's turn 210. 210 rudder, clear right. Clear right. Whew. Oh my god, I'm not looking up. You're okay. We're just avoiding it. <laughs> up and there was a mountain right there. So we gotta be below 6.5, then 4.5, then 2.5, I believe? Yep. Perfect. So we're below everything but the last little bit. Yep. So it should be pretty easy. <laughs> Uh, I got Agassi in front of us, so we'll continue until 45, I'm thinking, and okay. I'll just get you to fly the route. Sounds good. Hi, it's Paul from the future. Uh, something I should explain here before we enter the Greater Vancouver area. Now this right here is one of the aviation maps we use in the Kamloops area. When you're a pilot that has my ratings and qualifications and stuff, this is pretty much everything you need to know uh, to be able to fly in around Kamloops. Now I'm going to show you a map of the Vancouver area to the same scale, remember? It looks a lot like this. Now as you can tell from this map, there's a lot going on down there. Lots of airports, lots of everything, and this map is pretty much unreadable if you're trying to safely navigate the Vancouver area. The good news is there is a more detailed chart, and again to the same scale, it looks like this.
Now, as you can tell, there's still a lot going on in this chart, but what's really important here for our trip down is uh, these blue lines right here. These blue lines represent airspace boundaries. Now, these boundaries can be horizontal, but they can be vertical as well because airspace. So as we can see here, if you're within this boundary and you're above 4,500 feet, you need to talk to the folks at Vancouver Airport. And if you're below 4,500 feet, you don't. So on the way down, what we we're going to try and do is avoid the Vancouver International's airspace just to make our lives easier and more simple. So here is an example of roughly where we were when I interrupted the video a second ago. And this view shows Vancouver's airspace. So as you can see, it's kind of hovering up in the air. And as you go further west toward the airport, it kind of drops down lower and lower, like that inverted wedding cake example everybody likes to use. So that's what Riley was talking about when he was talking about, you know, 654525, five, basically making sure that we don't get into Vancouver's airspace without their permission and get them mad at us. Anyway, that's the story of that. Uh, back to the video. I suppose at some point you're going to want me to pull a paper map. Yep, why don't you grab that VTA and I'll show you exactly where we are. So we're roughly right here. Okay. And we're approaching it. So we got Harrison Hot Springs off our right. You can see the, uh, the lake out there. Nope. That's okay. It's out there. So between Chilliwack and Mission, we should definitely favor the north side of the river to avoid that restricted space for that yep. advisory screen. Or blasted because of the blasting yep. area. So that's Agassiz. Okay. Where's Chilliwack? Chilliwack is... It's, uh... Right in front of us, actually. How about where? Directly in front of us. Where's the, uh, Chilliwack Airport? Chilliwack Airport is... Very hard to spot. How do you know that? Flight simulator. Did you study the, uh, airport chart at all? I did. The ATIS said, earlier it said 08. Left. Right. Zero right, right, I yeah. believe. Which is coming this way on the south side. Right. So south so, yeah, side, the south, side south. south side circuit, north yeah. side, north side circuit. The other runway is west side circuit. Good. Now keep a good eye out for airplanes. It won't be as crazy as it normally is, but you can probably go like, oh, there's one, 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 there's one. Gotcha. Like, it's terrible. And they're going to be like 500 feet above you, 500 feet below you. Chaos. Gotcha. Now, there should be restricted area around Mission Bridge. Oh, uh, yeah, on the north side, yep. How high can we go with that? Uh, 50. What's it go up to? 1,500, 15,000, rather. 15,000? 15, oh, 1,500. 1,500. 1500. Where are we turning? Oh, there we are. Gonna butter this landing? Oh, it's gonna be... Do you know how long the runways are? Long enough. Long enough. Uh, one eight and is, well, I guess zero eight left. So the north side runway and the cross runway are quite short. They're okay. kind of like landing on two two. Right. Okay. But it's actually maintained, so it's pretty dang fun. Right. At Meadows Airport, information Foxtrot Limited weather at one nine or five zero Zulu, wind one zero zero at five, tower visibility one zero miles, the sky condition one thousand five hundred scattered, tower ceiling broken above five thousand, altimeter two nine or seven six. IFR approach, visual, runway 08 right, landing and departing, runway 08 left and 08 right. Note, aircraft departing, runway 08 right from taxiway Charlie, runway length remaining is 2,700 feet. Advise ground if you are able to depart from the intersection. Inform ATC on the initial contact, you have information Foxtrot. Alright, so why don't you make a radio call saying you're uh, passing mission at 2,500 westbound from Pit Meadows. Who would I call Glen Valley traffic Glen Valley Traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango is over Mission Bridge, 2,500 feet westbound for Pit Meadows. Glen Valley Traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango. God, the trauma coming back. <laughs> <laughs> From Glen Valley Traffic. I see a plane over there. Good. That didn't call us back. I'm going to just send a little bit more, I guess. He's probably switched over. Yeah, I guess so. There you are. There's your example. There's just going to be airplanes. Good yeah. eyes. All right, scoot in behind him. Whew. Oh, helicopter. 11 o'clock. Got him. Go right, go right. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. And descend. And uh, helicopter just north of Fort Langley. This is Cessna 172 Gulf Victor Oscar Tan. We're just off your 1 o'clock. We're uh, 2,000 feet. We're northwest bound. We're trying to avoid you there. Like, that's, that's the severity, and do not expect people to see you. 
Uh, All right. Gotcha. All right. So we have Foxtrot. Do you remember the ATIS? Uh, one six zero at five. Which yeah. mile is? We have the weather, and it's uh, expects you right, right or left. So coming on here, what's your next frequency? Ground. Yeah. Uh, Do not let that get away from you. Pit Meadows Tower, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango, one mile north of Albion with Foxtrot inbound, full stop. Okay, slow the plane down. Which apron are you parking today? We'll be down at the uh, south terminal, Victor, Oscar Tango. Victor, Oscar Tango Tower, thanks. Identified runway 08 right, cleared right downwind via the, pit, uh, the Golden Ears Bridge. Okay, so that's a Golden Ears, so say right downwind via Golden Ears. Right downwind via Golden Ears Bridge for Victor, Oscar Tango. So right, right, right downwind. Yeah, Got you it. have the airport site? Yep. Good. So we're going to do a right downwind, so we're going to go over the mountains, or not the mountains, the island to the south. Okay. For the right wind, zero, zero, 08 right. All now? Go for it. Pit tower, so the Gulf Victor, Oscar Tango, entering the downwind for zero, 08 for right, requesting full stop. Victor, Oscar Tango Tower, number 2, runway zero, 08 right, follow a Cessna 3 mile final. Number two, look. Number two, looking for the traffic. Uh, traffic in sight, Victor Tango. So when you exit, he's either going to tell you where to exit. So it's Charlie Bravo Alpha versus Charlie, then Bravo then Alpha. Okay. So he'll tell you to exit on one and either contact or monitor. Right. All right. Monitor means they're calling us. Contact means I'm calling them. Nope. Just monitor, so switch over, and listen. Bravo, contact ground one two three decimal eight. So okay. contact. contact ground on Bravo. Good. All right, we're going to turn final. Not tell about turn final. Nope, no need. All right, there. Unless, he, unless he doesn't clear you to land. Okay. Victor Oscar Tango Tower, taxiway Charlie will be blocked, so plan to exit right on Bravo or Alpha. Clear to land, runway zero right right. Clear to land, zero right right, Victor Oscar Tango. Another thing you could have said was um, a check remarks. Okay. Would have acknowledged what he said. This approach looks really good, a little high, but that's okay. You got her. All right, you know so... What you're doing. Yeah, this is the easy part. And low, gonna add a bit of power, get the nose down, oh, sort of slow down. You're good. Keep that nose low. Keep the nose low. You're still a little high. Right, this is the narrow runway that came with. Yeah. Really narrow. Illusion. Might need a tow right rudder on the flare. Made it, look down the runway, cruise, cruise, keep flaring. Oh, you're high, let it ease and pull. A little bit right, rudder. There. Were you pushing a little left? That might have been, yeah. Yeah, I think just a little bit. We kind of came down a little crooked, which was okay because we had a little bit of a right cross one, but I think you had a little much rudder in. So let's continue to Bravo. Victor Oscar Tango, contact ground on 123 decimal 8. 123 decimal 8, Victor Oscar Tango, thanks. And just say pit ground, that's all they are. Pit ground uh, on Bravo for the terminal. Take ground, Cessna 172, Golf Victor Oscar Tango on Bravo for the terminal. Victor Oscar Tango ground, taxi by Bravo to Apron 1. Bravo Apron 1, Victor Oscar. Bravo Apron 1, Victor Oscar Tango. Kinda neat, hey? Yeah, that was cool. Feel like a big boy? <laughs> <laughs> or do you feel a little nervous? I feel like I should have my big boy diaper on. <laughs> Welcome to Pit Meadows. Here with Riley. Riley brought me down here, got me down here safely. Uh, yeah, so we're just, um, there's Victor Oscar Tango back there. So yeah, we're just going to go inside and grab a snack. It was quite the flight down, apparently. Apparently it was nice. I couldn't really tell because I got the, had the hood on the whole time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the good news is I have most of the of the flight time that I need, my instrument time. So hopefully I'll be able to see a bit more on the way back. But we'll see what we'll see what Riley throws at me. Riley l loves to make my life difficult as difficult as possible. Yeah, partial panel to, down. Partial panel using paper maps, all that crap. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. I know how to get it. You know how to get it? Oh, I can get a car bike right away. What, just climb or something? You see that cloud too? <laughs> <laughs> Pull the power to idle as you fly through it. You'll get carbides. Don't, don't, don't ever do that. Uh, let's turn 180.